Hi, good morning. Welcome to eSIMS Engineering and uh, welcome computer science principal students. Uh, this particular video tutorial is for assignment 145 or project 145 from the computer science curriculum. And in this, uh, I would like to kind of give you an idea of some, uh, a workable uh, answer to the final question in the uh, in this assignment uh, sorry for the notification uh, so in this particular assignment you're working with a file that already sort of starts with a lot has a lot of functions in it and it's a pretty large file and you're going to be adding in addition to answering questions about this particular file you're going to be adding in one additional function towards the end which is obviously what this makes what makes this a project uh, for for this activity so um, one thing that uh, one of the files and examples that you have here is you have a function that takes uh, basically an image and it modifies the image and creates a modif modified image of that from that. So in other words, you still have the original file and then it asks you to inter interpret some code about what happens uh, within that code. So you're kind of looking at this function, round corners one image and then you're given two arguments, original image and percent of side equals 0.3. Now, if you have never seen this before, this particular argument right here, this percent of side four, uh, equals 0.3, this is what basically, I don't know why I didn't highlight that, um, this basically is giving a value to this argument if it is not provided. So in other words, you could call this function and just give an image, and then it will automatically assign this percent of side value as 0.3 unless you specify otherwise. So uh, you'll see a lot of functions have that. And we've talked about that before back in assignment, sorry, activity 141, when we uh, referred to uh, sort of default arguments. So this function basically takes that image and it sets original image size, radius is an int of the percent of side times min of minimum of the uh, width and height, radius in pixels. So it's creating a mask, which is kind of goes over the image and it calls a rounded mask and a drawing layer and then it draws polygons and ellipses and then it results, uh, result is that particular file name and then it pastes that into the original image and the, and the rounded mask and then returns the result. So basically it's creating a new file with a couple of corners uh, drawings done on the corners. So round corners one image was one we made up is defined here to take two arguments according to the functions doc string line 7 through 13 what uh, type of variable is each argument. Um, so you would just read the doc string and it would tell you what those are and then you would answer those questions. These are not hard questions uh, in general. They're really, the function is pretty much spelled out for you about what it's doing in each one. So just read those carefully. Uh, again, the point of this video is not to kind of go over these item by item, but I want to just kind of get you in the right mode, uh, right frame of mind, no pun intended. So this particular image now in number eight, this particular code uh, defines get images and the second function is created that is created by mask.py. What is the code answer the following questions? Again, same kind of deal here. This, but let's just look over this, what it does here. If you're not in a directory, it gets your current working directory, which is what CWD stands for. So we get the current working directory and then we uh, make a list. We get an image list and a file list. And the directory list is a list directory, which is again a list of the files. That's a function right there in the OS module that will list all the files in the directory that we are using, which is our current working directory, unless we specify a directory to get images from. Uh, once we do that, we get an absolute file name. So we use path join directory entry. And then we would try to open the image in pill and if it works, then you know it works and we add the file list and we add it to the image list, except if we get an input output error, we just pass that file. So if it's a file like a text file, it would just skip that file. That's really all that. And then of course we get those two as uh, returns. We get an image list and we get a file list from that. So other functions will use this function to kind of get uh, the, the, the images that are in, in a directory. So with the description of that, you know, we continue uh, on here, like I said, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the questions portion of this. Um, it does talk about the try accept thing. That was something that was new. Try accept is a, you know, it's sort of an error control uh, thing because you are bound to have runtime errors and runtime errors can stop a program from running completely. So uh, having try accept in there can prevent those runtime errors from, 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 you know, cutting off access to a program or cutting off the program itself. Um, now we have a function that rounds corners of all images. And this file basically is, uh, this is a third function in here. And the same kind of deal here is we take the um, get current work directory, we join the path, we image, we image, <laughs> image list and file list and we're using the get images. So there's that function we just used right here. This is getting all of those images. And then for the length of the image list, 
we get file name file type from that uh, split text file list. And so in other words, the, uh, we're getting a split text file list. Um, I'm imagining that is going to path.split text file list. Hmm. That particular one is, I believe, removing the extension uh, of the file name. So if it was a PNG file, it's going to split that up. Uh, it's a, so another, I see. Yep, that's, that's, what, that, that's what it is. So you get the file name. So if it was like image1.png, file name would become image and file type would be .png. So it's splitting that text based on the file list. Um, then it's going to make an image and then it's going to round the corners of the image using that current image and then create a new file name in a new directory and the file name will be .png and then save that image under that new file name. So just like before, it's making a new, and also by the way up here, it makes a new directory called modified if we don't already have one and that would be made in the current working directory. So it's taking all the files and putting them into a, a new folder basically. All right, so continuing now, this is what you came for. This is the one you came for, number 10, okay? You save the code, use a different file name, modify to accomplish one of the following objectives. Your code should include two new functions modeled after round corners of one image and round corners of all images. So this particular one is going to cover uh, option A, which is frame all images color and wide. So it makes a frame version of all pictures in a directory where the frame is specified by the color RGB and has a thickness wide. So I'm going to show you uh, this function that I had created. Now, just want to point out, I had created this particular um, file in 2015 when I was being trained in this course. So it may have, you know, it may be kind of an easy fix, to, but, it, it, but it works. So here's what I did. I basically took the previous function, which is the round corners of all image function, and I based my new function off of that. So what I did was I got the current work directory, made a modified directory, had the try accept, and then got my file list, and then I called the image round corners pixel. So I made a new file name basically. And then what element on the list I am and then how wide it's gonna be and then the color, which I specify when I frame all images. So I can specify what color do I want the frame to be and how wide do I want it to be. And of course specify an image directory if I, unless I want to use the current working directory. Then it creates, it rounds corners of the pixels, image list using wide color and then New image file name, new image save, right? So it's basically the same, almost the same function as this function, round corners of all images. So I based off of that. Now, what's different about it is the function that is called, which I took this now, this I based it off of round corners of one image. This particular one is going to draw a frame and it's going to use the polygon feature uh, using radius, width radius, and it's going to make sort of an arcish kind of shape. And then I'm also throwing it in the lips on here. And it's using the color that I called uh, originally and passed into this function as well. And then it's going to take that new image, make the result new image, file size, and then use this as its mask color. Um, and then paste it onto the rounded mask. So it's basically doing two different things. It's kind of, like I said, based off of other functions, but it does work. So I'm going to test it now for you. And I'm going to frame all images, excuse me, and I'm going to call, uh, let's call for a cyan. So that's going to be a green and a blue of max value. And then I'm going to also throw in a 255 mass. So the way I wrote my function, I included the alpha channel, RGBA as a format there. You can see there, there's our new format there. And I also have uh, in here a, a couple of default colors. Uh, it's the fill colors and polygon colors that are using the color that I pass in. So let's try it. So I'm going to load that up. I think I already did, but just in case, and it can't hurt. So I'm going to call in frame all images and I'm going to specify now this I have to specify the color as a uh, array so I'm going to go 255 255 and then 255 for the alpha and then I'm going to go with a width of let's go with 50 pixels and then I'm not going to, going to use the current working directory and let's see if this works as is all right so it looks like it's doing its thing it's going through a directory and modifying all of the images and now it should be done so I noticed that you know, it goes to the next line. You're like, well, well nothing happened. Well, let's go into uh, my file here. So here I've got this. Uh, looks like I'm trying to look and see. I might have I might have hard coded a uh, couple of the colors. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so it takes the images and notice that all these images now have 
this sort of yellow, and I can that's that's how I can tell I, I hard coded it somewhere. Um, this yellow arcing border around the image, okay, and that was basically because I made a square, and then I cut out using really a circle. Uh, from that. So I got sort of the combination of those two and they got married in and then you get this resulting mask and it makes more sense if I look at any of these other images uh, like this one here. This one here you can see you get clearly a rounded shape at the end on the corners of the image and it works out perfectly in that regard. Uh, it looks pretty cool with the sun too. Check that out. That's pretty cool. So let me look back at my code though and let's take a look and see where I'm getting that yellow from. I want to see if I can modify that to the color that I am trying to get which was this cyan. And so if we go down here you'll notice that in this result I'm using a hard coded color here. So I'm actually going to modify this and I'm going to change it to the color and see if that is all the change I need to make. Let's see. So I'm going to store that new function and we're going to run this procedure again. Now watch this. I'm going to show this live. This is pretty cool. So we specify a color. We specify a pixel and I'm going to press enter. Now I'm going to go to the modify directory. It's done and oh, it's still showing up as a Still showing up as that. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe if I go back here, nope, one, four, five images is there. Uh, I might be, I wonder if I'm doing it in, let's see. All right. So I made it just a quick change to my working directory and I actually put it, even though I had the Python file in the same folder as the images originally, uh, it wasn't quite transferring. So what I did was I went to uh, my Python working directory and I modified, I put it right into where I had the images stored. And I also put the Python file there and that got that to work at that point. So um, just again, just to show you. So here is the uh, couple of the images and you'll see here a rounded corner on the top here. Now there is one sort of, I don't want to call it an error, but there's one thing that uh, this, this, the way I've written this file, it doesn't let a mask get created and um, if the amount of uh, amount of size of my frame which is basically in pixels is more than half of the width or the height so for the smaller images in my file if I specify 150 you'll see I've all those borders had changed in this particular case right so if I had made it so that all of the um, uh, if I had any size or any any images that were too big then it would not have an output on here. And I think that that's something that was automatically programmed in by PLTW in the original function, uh, not necessarily something that I was aware, I was sort of aware of. But you can see here in this image, you can see these arcs are kind of coming close to each other. So if I made, let's try, let's test that out real fast. Um, this is 265. So what if I make the mask's pixel size 266? And let's see if it makes one for the trumpet. And see, I'm just basically modifying the exact same images each time. And it's going through the images. You actually can kind of see it live update, which is kind of cool. Uh, this particular file was not changed. Uh, and that goes with my theory of 266. Yeah, this is 220 by 287. This file did not have a mask added to it. And here is that trumpet. It's still running. It's still running, still running, still running. And there, there, see it? There it is. That trumpet because we included a dimension that was higher than its actual resolution, it did not apply the mask to that, but other files it did. So this function works out pretty well, and I also can specify a different color. Right now I have cyan as my color, but if I want to do something a little more neutral, uh, I can go 125 here. I can do, um, let's say, 175 here, and I'm 50 there, just to be different. And then I can run that. Oh, stop, sorry. I, uh, ha. Deleted my own, uh, my own, my own color. Uh, try again. 100, 127. Did I do it again? Nope. 50. Let's try 50 there. And we press enter, and it's going to add that frame. And you'll see how it's, the color is changing, right? So now we have a different color specified on here, and it works out. So there you go. There, there you have it. So that's a kind of an overview of what you would want to do for 145. I hope this helps. I hope this helps kind of think and guide your thinking. Um, Hopefully you'll do something and have a little bit more, you know, <laughs> I guess more robust or more different than what we had, but it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. And again, please subscribe to Usums Engineering and thank you for your support of our channel. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.